Hello and welcome to Xena Warrior Podcast. My name is Vera and I'm joined as always by my two organic co-hosts, Katie. Hello. And Libby. Hello. Why organic? Because that's awesome. Okay, this is just your favorite word. Because I want to go to Whole Foods, obviously. <laughs> You're so basic. <laughs> um, we are back with part two of our mailbag. Hermes, Hermes mailbag, yeah. part two. <laughs> oh, yeah. So French. <laughs> <laughs> And we have some fun questions to discuss today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this time yeah. we will be covering non-season five related questions. So that's just general Xena stuff and Duff. non-Xena yeah. questions. So if Duff. you want Duff. season five shit, goes to the previous one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So let's just dive on in. Dive in. Mm-hmm. What's first? Uh, well, it seems to be the reboot. Ah, Anna Heathcote on Facebook asks, Hey ladies, I hope I'm not too late for the mailbag. Not too late. Not too late, (laughs) Anna. Also, you probably already have this question, but anyway, we do actually have it. (laughs) Two people asked this question, so this is going to cover both of you in one fell swoop. Anna asks, Did you guys listen to or read about the Xena Warrior Business Podcast with Javier Grillo Marchois, where they discussed what his remake would have been? Just wondering what your thoughts were. Also, here is a photo of me playing the Xena PlayStation game as a kid, and she did send us a very this is ad- such a cute photo. adorable photo of herself posing <laughs> with the Xena PlayStation game. Love. Mom wanted photos of us doing our favorite things one summer. My brother was playing Australia Rules Football. My sister was outside reading. What a nerd. (laughs) And I combined two of my favorite things, Xena and video games. They still are two of my favorite things. I don't remember much of the gameplay, but I remember the catapults because Xena would randomly say, catapults. I hate (laughs) catapults. That's so legit. LOL, I must have died a lot on them because I remember her saying that heaps. (laughs) Oh my <laughs> gosh. That is such a cute story. That's we love funny. this. So uh, we also had a question from Kathy O'Grady, which was very similar, asking us for our thoughts on the Hobby reboot. Mm-hmm. And what uh, are your opinions on catapults, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we have listened to the Xena Warrior Business podcast. Yeah, that the number Hobby one thing. Start on. Yeah, the number one thing that I remember being like, "Whoa, blown away by," is possibly that his last name is pronounced. Mark's watch. Mark's watch. That's what Chris Sims called him, and he was right there on the podcast. Do you think he just was like wrong, or does oh. he have inside info? I we, thought it was we, that. We need to send a question to the Xena Warrior yeah. Biz mailbag. Yes. Like, how do you pronounce? How do you really Bobby's pronounce? Yeah. Because did he explain? He didn't correct, so I was like, mm, I don't know. I well, have heard I it like that way. Marshwa. Marshwa, yeah. I think that's. Totally cool. Also, because it sounds a little bit like a whoosh, you know, Marshall. Ah. <laughs> so. Well, what is in so many words that are small, the, the summary of the reboot? Right. Yeah. Like, it's pretty complicated. Dude, I know. I feel well, like the, it's hard to the do elevator it pitch. Quickly. The elevator pitch was, so, yeah. Xena. This is your hobby impression? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Xena, but it's Gladiator meets Mad Max Fury Road. Which I feel like we probably said something similar to that in an early mailbag about what we would want a reboot Xena to be, something Mad Max. Really? I we, swear. we probably mentioned Fury Road because it was like back in the back day. in the day, very hot for us. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I certainly love Fury Road. I'm not yeah. sure about the Gladiator half of this. Well, he speech. loves Gladiator. He really loves Gladiator. Yeah. I think he just meant like aesthetic and yeah. It just seems to me okay. This is he's setting the tone. It this is serious business. Yeah, it's a serious show. The tone is definitely serious business. Oscar-winning film. I don't think Gladiator. Emmy-winning show. <laughs> it is, but like wheat fields. Meaning, you know, it's kind of like when we were asked about the reboot, and we were like, "It's gonna be serious. No campy shit. Like, 
yeah. no loving wuxia tribute. It's hard because that's some that, 90s, you know. Yeah. It's, it's very hard because time. that was also the needs and wants of the people making original Cena. Right. Mm-hmm. So I've clearly Gladiator was the needs and wants of Javi. So that's his touch, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I totally get it. His other thing, big thing, was that it was going to be no gods. No so gods. It was going to be all. like the. It was going to be what? the science behind. Okay. The gods, I guess. It so. sounded a little like Troy. Yeah, Troy. Like how everybody worships the gods, but then all, like all the things they witness can be explained by scientific, you know, environmental means. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That was like a thing in Troy. No, it Your was. Your favorite movie. I know, yes. I would, if, if Javi had said Troy meets Fury Road, I would have been like, yes. As it was, he was like Gladiator, and I was like, okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> The Troy show on Netflix that I didn't watch had gods, so they like retconned or yeah, like they course. fixed what was missing in the movie. Well, that's almost the thing that's happening now is you do these sort of gritty interpretations, and then like the pendulum swings the other but way. But you can be gritty. And people get more whimsical again. No, I'm sorry, no offense, but you don't have to be whimsical if it's like featuring a god. It doesn't have to be silly. Mm. It can be realistic Se- and, and you want deep. Serious, gritty god stuff. It can, yeah. All I right. I find those gods. I I think they're cool. I would happily take the opportunity with a reboot to get rid of all the gods. Forever. I, I would disagree. Get, yeah, get rid of them in the campy way. Keep I them in the very serious well. way. I think they're a perfect like embodiment and personification of the Greek gods that you would have to keep in my reboot. Yeah. Wait, but who who is a perfect? Cena's. Oh. Oh, wait. So like you do Ares and stuff. Yeah. Similar to the show. Yeah. Well, don't do it like Wonder Woman did it. Well, no. I forgot about that. We don't need him. Don't want any David Zulis in there. I just, I, the, I don't, yeah, I'm trying to picture a version of Xena that didn't involve them, and it makes me sad. Yeah. I just always like Xena when it's about kind of human problems. Sure, I, but like, but like I obviously religion love is a the huge character. human problem. Yeah, but, you know, having a god who's in love with you and keeps like following you around. Okay, but maybe we don't Greek gods this. literally went around having sex with maybe so many Maybe we don't need to do people. that. Yeah. But they are literally like human characteristics and like human yeah. like things that could be like part of what you like most about characters like if utilized correctly like they're You listen, she's complaining about it but if yeah. she watched it her fave characters would be whatever would god be all was the featured. Gods. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, totally what what happens in the pilot? Just uh, in the, in the yeah, what happens in the okay, pilot? Okay, so the pilot involves first you have Xena working with Hercules. Oh, right. Hercules this was, yes. is this warlord and he's doing his labors, but actually he's doing them with Xena. And as you watch, you realize that actually Xena's like kind of doing most of the work. Yeah. Like it, Hercules is basically Xena's taking, doing it first. Yeah, he's taking credit <laughs> for stuff she's doing. Uh, he ends up betraying her and basically throwing her through the gauntlet. Literally and- sounds like Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the coolest things yeah. that in Javi's pitch is this idea of using Hercules as the season one villain. Yeah. For his Xena. I think that's a very strong choice that's immediately kind of telling you something mm-hmm. about this world. Javi seems to feel very strongly that the whole idea of having... Hercules you know, kind of redeem, you know, gets get Xena started on her redemption because he like unchains her heart with his love. Like that <laughs> that was very offensive. Like for modern audiences, we do not need to see that at all. And actually making him into a villain who seems to sort of be like, you know, the patriarchy per- yeah. personified, the strong man who's taking credit for her work. She like is like all fucked up after the gauntlet and like ends up with Gabrielle who is a Scythian which is a change from before she's kind of part of this nomadic Scythian tribe and they like nurse Xena back to health and bond and Xena like starts training with Gabs and they sort of have this like brief period where they're like living together and like get to know each other and during that period, I think there are sparks. <laughs> and then there's this kind of complex political plot that involves mm. Gabrielle being a doppelganger for this princess yeah. for, uh, in, in another kingdom. And the king like wants 
the king of the Scythians wants to like use Gabs like to like for a political marriage. So they like kidnap her and take her away. And it also turns out that Hercules is involved in this kidnapping. Like that he, he's providing the army that this king is using. So Xena at the end has to like go after Gabs and save her. And that seemed to kind of set up a serialized plot for the next few episodes. Yeah, so that's also cool, the serialized. As, yeah, it as we knew completely it would be, serialized, right? yeah. And, like and anybody, then, like, Jaxar and Atelicus are there. Yeah, I think in later episodes, she would have hooked up with these kind of failed soldiers, Atelicus, Jaxar. Oh, no. Other people, maybe. So New characters, weird. I don't know. Callisto's an assassin of sorts. Callisto, Callisto would appear yeah, too. Yeah, would yeah. be hired to kill her. Uh, Hercules was going to, like, have his legs chopped off. Okay. Yeah. And then have like cyber legs or like steampunk legs. I was yeah. like, okay, that seems not related to anything. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's cool just image. So hobby interests. <laughs> um, and and they would kiss by the end of the first episode. Xena and and Hercules' legs. Well, Xena and Hercules do have a romance. <laughs> it it that I left that part right. out because it's gross. <laughs> uh, but also, Xena and Gabs would kiss by the end of the first episode, which was a point of contention. It seems like the network was not sure about that; that they well, didn't feel it was earned. Earned that yeah. this kiss they felt, I guess, needed to happen I, like after like a slow burn, which. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And he I, had an interesting point where he was saying that, well, if this was like a show with the male lead, he would, you know, rescue the damsel and kiss her at the end of the ep- first episode. Yeah. And you'd be totally fine with that. You wouldn't even question it. But it might be like, this said. is boring. I don't care about them yet. <laughs> because doing a uh-huh. whole romance in 40 minutes is hard, uh-huh. especially if you're setting up all these other characters and political intrigue. Right. It yeah. sounds complicated. I'm sure that if you watched it, it would be less complicated. But yeah. like, um, I am kind of. Um, I think that he doesn't. He like stressed a lot the idea that he like really wanted them to kiss and like be, if not in love, like having that happen at the end of the first episode. And I'm not on board. <laughs> I just love a slow burn. I love a slow yeah. burn. It's also, it's television. I, he said something like, if they were, if it was a heterosexual relationship, they would be kissing by the end of the first episode and that's also just absolutely not true. Yeah. Um, I think this is pretty classic <laughs> TV. I mean, it's one thing if you're do, you're kind of trying to do something yeah. different that I, undermines that typical script, yeah. the slow burn script. I just think that like, the whole point of the show and the longevity of the show is the conflict and developing relationship between Zena and Gabrielle and if they're just like training together and you get like maybe 10 minutes of some kind of bonding and that's it and then like she's kidnapped for three episodes and it did seem like <laughs> yeah like, that they were going to the... be separated for a while okay which seemed like an odd like I don't so mean to be like that's uh, why um, they kissed Immediately. Yeah, you gotta set up reasons yeah. after. Yeah, so like I'm not I'm not like super keen, I gotta say, like on on that. Like e- even like some of my other favorites, like which I feel like is gonna come up in a question later, like the the developing relationship of like really big romance arcs that I love, like they don't even get there till episode seven or like four, but then it's weird. Or like you know what I mean? It's just like I don't know, it feels a little unearned like whatever his comment Javi's comment was I feel like it would like just feel forced he's like see look look what I'm gonna do it immediately look I'm doing it look they're (laughs) yeah totally gay look look like I did it look (laughs) um and I don't know that sort of just makes me I don't know I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be like a real thing that yeah. like slowly unfolds in front of me and a that I get to enjoy TV watching. TV romance. Yeah. So I don't mean, I don't know. It's just like, it's one of those things I'm very bad at discerning plots, like stuff for, that could be a TV show. Like I'm super bad at it. Like I shouldn't be asked this question because I think everything doesn't sound good. Like I would never be able to like make any that kind of That seems actually really good for a TV executive because <laughs> people would have to convince you. You'd have to be like, that doesn't sound good. Like make it sound so good. So this is like not like any kind of like, it's just me being like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, there were other things about, like, I'm not, I feel like I could um, be convinced that, you know, like, that you start them with kisses, but then that's almost, like, 
you know, the false step in their relationship. Like they take, they go too fast. Sure, okay. Like I, I feel like there are yeah, like, you have to con- there are ways yeah. of beating out this that would actually allow you know for the characters to evolve over time, even yeah. with a quick start. Uh, but like the thing that I am very hesitant about with Javi's reboot, which Isn't we haven't really talked thing? about, is her backstory. backstory yes. Which I, I that's the Mad Max. Yeah, yeah, that's the Mad Max part, which is that she's taken as a slave uh-huh. when she's very young by, I, I'm not even sure who, some some scary army. Yeah. Uh, maybe Hercules' army. I don't know. So her dark past kind of comes from her being the slave who, like, kind of tries to take control of her own destiny and, like, rises through the ranks of the army from being a slave who's, like, mistreated brutally to, like, mistreating people herself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds obviously very upsetting and traumatic. And I don't know. I just, like, don't care for it no. as a new, like, I, that's not Xena to me. That's not who Xena was. Like, why, yeah, why does just, she we, need this we traumatic this, backstory? Yeah, we love that she came from such a small kind of uh, meaning good, like, a Meaning, meaning well, like a yeah. W- yeah, well-meaning place is what I'm trying to say, um, of like protecting her small village and and rose to such great craziness. Yeah, and it just doesn't come with like all the stuff that that come like implies and comes with. Like to me, that like I don't know how if it's like a serious drama uh, set in this time. Like, I don't know how she doesn't have like a rape backstory as well, which well, is like, I believe that's what it is. You know, like, I, I don't, I haven't I, heard I him say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, it's, it, but, but it's what it is. It. But yeah, Otherwise, hearing that a character was, if a you slave. go Mad Max Fury Road, yeah. that's what it is. And also it would be if he's doing a gritty show, you know? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Weird feelings. He talked about like the backstory on the show and mm. that he oh. felt like finding out, you know, that Zena was just this hometown girl with her like nice tavern owning mom who like was disappointed in her. He he Javi I think called that like soft softening the character. Which like he crazy. felt it was a way th- that the show was trying to make you like her more that you saw that she actually had this very like re- relatable past. But I don't know, to me that So he, wait, he, his version he's like I want her to be like the worst yeah. ever. Like he really, I think. But sees making her, her being uh, like a slave, you're immediately like drawn. To yeah, her. you're me- immediately. But I guess you know her. she just doesn't have any. She probably wouldn't have family ties. Her whole like. Great. Like, get rid of Cyrene. Whole- but give us Joxer. <laughs> <laughs> the whole way she sees life is this very dark, jaded thing. Right. Where like this is all she's known is yeah. like this kind of dog eat dog way of looking at life. Oh my he, God. he said something that, that amused me about like the dynamic between Xena and Gabrielle where he was like, it's like having a Vulcan talking to a Gilmore girl. That was how he <laughs> described their vibe. It's really funny. I just realized that I've read this fic and I liked it. It was the the Gladiator Gabrielle backstory fic. Wait, was was uh, where she was, she was that she was like super, like great backstory, oh, like totally nothing, Everybody whatever, a slave loved, person, uh, and then Zena, you know, kind of helps her out. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it would have been that in reverse in many ways in hobbies. It sounds like Zena has just come from this very damaged, dark place, and Gabrielle is this optimistic ray of sunshine who's very funny. He said that most of the comic relief in the show would come from Gabrielle, that she would be this sort of plucky mm-hmm. figure. Like first season. Yeah, like first season. Yeah. Dance. Um, and that Zena would be really cynical. <laughs> Remember how ridiculous and cute and funny she was in the first yeah. like, few episodes? When she played those little dope. pipes. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Who is that person? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm being like, I don't know, like, it's hard because we all love the show so much that we all just want it to be good. And like, I certainly am not anti reboot. I want to see it. I mean, I he has some really it. good ideas. Like, like yeah, he definitely there's some has. Really good stuff uh, in there. That, and that he's a talented talent writer. Yeah, I yeah. like, I now I'm making myself sad. He like, uh, had the show The Middleman that was super, super fun a long time ago. I forget Which when was that was. was very close to how Xena, yeah, it was the fun. 90s it was, Xena is. Yeah. That's true. It's very campy. Yeah. Should we also say he wrote the hundred? He did, and yeah, on yeah. the podcast he mentioned that mm-hmm. um, he they, killed Lex. Yes, he, he knows did. that. He knows, he he knows that. that. He said he that he knows what he did. He, I mean, he, he knew did, that it was, was going to be a bad six months before yeah. it aired. He knew that it was going to be a shitstorm. Yeah, 
and he yeah. implied so, that other people didn't, yeah. and he was right. So I can see, you know, he's been through some stuff. So like, he's very I educated. He's very educated on on this thing. Yeah, and, he, he was very well spoken, and I do recommend yeah. uh, people. There's a write up of this on like what tour dot com something like that. Something but, uh, like that. But uh, I do recommend giving it a listen on Xena Warrior Biz. Uh, because he's just, he spoke about this a lot better than us. Um, <laughs> yeah, only he can really defend his ideas. Yeah. I totally he, give And he him, was so eager to talk about it. Yeah, it was that I give him such props for just like, you know, this is very rare in Hollywood. When a project dies, people de- tend to clam up about it because you just, you know, A, you never know what's going to happen, and B, yeah. you know, it's a, a community of relationships and you can't be sure, you know, right. when you say something, <laughs> who it's going to get back to. So yeah. props to Javi for not being two-faced in that way he's no, just coming out he, and, yeah. and speaking his truth he seemed like he had a really hard time in the development process uh but now he's ready to sing um <laughs> but also like, he, the way that he talked about it were like the hosts of biz uh chris and Allie. they they kept trying to say stuff and then he would be like okay okay but like back to the back to the script like like where he was like really proud of it and like very like you know he wanted to sort of yeah. share the ideas so that maybe I, like he yeah. could see it in your brain <laughs> even though you can't really see it on yeah. your TV. Yeah, I I would love to see it. You know what I mean? I feel like I can't make any kind yeah. of decision until I actually saw it. That's my problem. So I like want, oh. I can only take like the little ideas and be like, well, I would rather they make out in episode seven. <laughs> well, like you know what I mean? Like so, like right. it's like, and that's just my personal. Right. way I like to watch like a release. I want to read the concluding thought from okay. Kathy's email. Mm-hmm. She says, thoughts on why when everything is being rebooted, Xena still can't get one, even with a very experienced writer like Javi being deeply committed. He said on the podcast, the failure of this project was one of his deepest professional disappointments. And this from the man who killed Lexa. <laughs> <laughs> that just like speaks to me of like, you know, he's really passionate about it and I think that he would do like a good job like running it. Yeah, he was like he was really into it. Yeah. Um so it's, that bumps it's a me shame. Out. Oh, yeah, but you know, I mean sure. I don't think we should take any like I wouldn't take this personally exactly because I mean these things happen all the time in Hollywood like I don't think Xena is somehow being singled out for failure I think there are so many reboot ideas that don't see the light of day simply because like all the factors don't Mm -hmm. fall into place quite right and it's a bummer but but it is what it is yeah I'm, I'm glad Javi's finding ways of like sharing his ideas with the fandom how he can yeah and he's he's working on um Dark Crystal for right. Netflix, yeah, uh, and he kind of like he 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 just really wants to like I think cannibalize some of this uh, Xena stuff into his own project. So if you see some Scythian like things and gladiator esque <laughs> things there, then you know where it comes from. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it should get a reboot. All the things can have one. Yeah, the yeah. T- the time is right. I think we'd all love to see you know, someone return to this universe and use 2018 feels and yeah. the discourse to, like, do yeah. Xena now. I, I do I think, think it should the, be t- us. the time is right. We it should, should do be it. us. Yeah. No. Let's do it. No, Let's please. Go, yeah. Let's do it. Xena it's Warrior us. Podcast presents Xena <laughs> Warrior Princess. No. <laughs> complicated credits. <laughs> Too stressful. Absolutely not. All right. We should uh, go to the next question. It's from Beers for Queers. That was an amazing name. I know. The Chaim. Uh, okay. So, oh. Beers for Queers says, please, in excruciating detail, break down the definitive Xena Gabs relationship timeline over the course of the series. Big crush reveal, first date, and where, who chose, when is their anniversary, and at what point did they most definitely become ancient Greek wives? I feel like this question has an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they fell in love in episode one. Were they kissed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Well, I think we, we've we kind of hammered it out a little bit on the podcast. We think yeah. the quest is kind of when yeah. the feelings were first expressed. The big crush reveal, as Beers for Queers says. Mm-hmm. Where do you guys imagine the first date happened? What was the deal with that? I don't, like, picture them dating. Is that... a 
<laughs> like everything that I, they do, they just do. Like well, I, don't, I think the you date know, like a would date be that, like, like a let's nice... go to a tavern and sit yeah, at but a like, table so across like, from yeah, each but, other but and talk But then talk about Zina, like stuff. gets Gab's like an extra. I feel like it's a know, hot tub. The f- their first hot tub is obviously yeah, their first date. Who? So Gab's would be like Zena. Let's go do hot tubs. Let's go do. Hot I mean, tubs. I think Zena's the one who introduced hot tubs to Gab's. Right, but then like the next time it was like Gab's being like, "Let's oh, go do hot tubs." Yeah, Gab loves hot hot, hot, tub hot tubs. Yeah. That's really smart. So you think Gab's actually kind of made the first move in that way? Um. Yeah, I think because Gab's has been in love with Zena since oh. episode one. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, when is their anniversary? What do they do for their anniversary? Do, do they? Uh, do they they throw a log at Zena's back what? to celebrate the quest. <laughs> their anniversary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I okay. think they probably stargaze. That seems to be yeah, a I think they stargaze, thing they do annually. Yeah. 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 And daily. <laughs> this is what I mean by it's hard to be like, what do they do for <laughs> special <laughs> occasions and dates? Because, yeah. like, everything is just like, uh, you know, they just do this stuff on the regular. <laughs> I don't know. What are the what are the fancy restaurants in uh, ancient oh my gosh. like Greek where they I go? Th- on I think Meg's Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the movies. They split a Bard Burger. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think they most definitely became ancient Greek wives in Ides of March. I think that's pretty clear. After they were murdered, I think. You know, by be like oh, it's like together get, the ceremony of crucifixion together, and that yes. was their them getting married. Yes, romance. He's that gonna style. romance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's <laughs> romance. You're style. right. I like this. <laughs> they decided they were on the same path, the path of getting crucified together in mm. matching outfits. Yes. So. Yeah, and the like floaty dresses. Yeah, very wedding. Yeah, they were white. Because their honeymoon of the was they CGI. went to heaven. Yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Your fave could um. never. <laughs> we did it. Okay. We did it. A timeline. <laughs> That's it. We did it. Next. Uh, Kate on Twitter writes, out of Zena's male love interests, who do you think A, meant the most to her, and B, had the biggest effect on her life long term? Also C, if Xena had to choose between Hercules, Ares, Marcus, and Boreas, who do you think she would choose and why? <laughs> well, uh, not Hercules. No, X out Hercules. <laughs> Him and his legs. <laughs> oh I mean, God. I I mean part of this is just you can't help but see this with your eyes of which eyes? I'm real biased. I, I love Barias. Yeah. I want it to be Barias, even if it's not true. Uh-huh. Though he obviously had a huge effect on her life. He's, yeah. It's true. He's clearly shown to have been a significant factor in kind of what, when Xena chose to like turn her life around. Not because of anything he did, but because of the things she did to him. So he mm-hmm. meant the most to her is what you're saying? I think she could have had a life with him in a way that we don't really know is true for any of these other men. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marcus, they seem to have had like some sexy things happen and she likes him, but I don't know if it goes further than that. I would hope if she had to choose to like just pick one that it would be like Marcus because he's he's, clearly the nicest. He came around, he's nice and they would be, have a nice life. That's who she would choose. Like if we want the best for her. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mary, is this like a Mary fuck this, kill yeah, scenario? Yeah, this is a disguise <laughs> Mary FM kill, kill yeah. and ignore. <laughs> <laughs> ignore Hercules, kill Ares, fuck Barias, Mary Marcus. Oh, Wait a uh, minute, I didn't process <laughs> What? Ignore Hercules, kill Ares, fuck Barias, Mary Marcus. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. But, Okay. Mm, what's your reshuffling i'm just trying to think like who met like ooh, this is just this is tricky because you know i'm like the aries fangirl Mm, that's true i killed him (laughs) and i was like yeah i think that he's too dangerous to live one of them might have meant more versus having like a bigger effect i think we could choose between the two of them that way well the biggest effect i would give to caesar that's not he's on, not on this list. list. Yeah. He's not here. But that's the answer that's to that. That's not a choice. Because he's Sorry. clearly an inappropriate 
I guess companion to Zena because he he didn't love her. These are four men who who did love Zena. No, it's because he crucified her and sucks and sucks. <laughs> I think maybe we should just kill Barias. No, you how dare no, life and never. She just then she just fuck Aries, but like not like be like that interested in his like thoughts and opinions. Kill him. In other words, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> I guess we can't answer this question. Yeah. And the, I mean, certainly the biggest effect on her life long term is just a very hard one to answer because certainly Aries yeah. had a big, was a big influence at a certain time in her yeah. life. Yeah, um, but and Barias was a big influence at a certain time in her yeah, life. It, Marcus was there. He Hercules had a baby was a pretty with technically Barias and yeah. Aries does not get to But like have Hercules remember cured her with his magic dick. <laughs> yeah. He so. I don't care about him. <laughs> remember what she said in season 1, Hercules mother you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What she would say. Oh jeez. It doesn't really count cuz it didn't happen line. on the end of the show. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> so, I don't so I guess an answer to your question, Kate Barias. That's the answer. Barias! <laughs> yes, Barias. But uh, I think yeah, it's probably true because I think he did mean more to her in terms of the relationship. I mean, a- Aries defines himself as like the man she refuses to actually like have a relationship exactly. with. Yeah. So I feel like that's very different from someone mm-hmm. who, she, who she actually did allow into her yeah, life exactly. at one point. Yeah. Okay. It's me, Barras. I mean more to her than Aries. <laughs> Barras, would you like to ask the next question? No, <laughs> no thank you. Uh, okay, is it me? Yeah. Or no, it's you. Oh, it's me? Yeah. Okay. Kathy on Twitter asks, with the use of the Natalie Merchant song in Antony and Cleopatra... What other recent pop songs would fit in which episodes? Girls Just Want to Have Fun has to fit somewhere, right? I mean, obviously, it Girls Just Girls Want to have, have Fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that would go. You should go in the quest. I, I really love this question, but I'm kicking myself because I really don't know music. I like, You don't can't know. think of one song. I, I don't know well, what I would it, do here. I have a oh, problem. I, I wanted to use Jewel. I want to use Who Who Will Save Your Soul. Oh, oh my God. Oh, just over like some kind of emotional montage. With Barias. <laughs> <laughs> They're horse fucking. <laughs> and it's like, Who Will Save Your Soul? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's pretty perfect. <laughs> Lama floats in. She's like, my hands are small, I know, but they're not yours. They are my you guys own. are so good. Um, Maybe Jewel will come and do the, thank the patrons someday. <laughs> um, yeah, I know it says recent pop sex, but I can't help but just keep it 90s because it's just weird to have that Natalie Merchant Girls one. Just fun isn't recent, so it's fine. Yeah. It's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah you can do, you can do I what think you just want. pop songs. Well, I want Natalie and Brulia Torn. <gasps> mm. I love Torn. For Torn the rip cover. <gasps> Thank Ooh, you for that. Well, you're all you're a little late. I'm already too. <laughs> that point? was um uh, that yeah, was they're they're, bur- they're burning moment? their children. Oh, <laughs> oh, and shit. Gabs is like, Zena, I love you, and it's like, you're a little late. <laughs> I'm already done. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Katie, you have any any requests? Mm. Oh yeah, mine is a whole musical episode that is set in a piano bar, a dueling piano bar. Just FYI, it's Between, like it's the rift. Zena and Gabs duel no, on the piano. No, it's pianos. just like another liar, liar, but mm, like but only in a dueling bar. piano bar. Like, okay. and that's it. I don't care. It's just an excuse for my favorite piano bar songs. I didn't like need any kind of actual pop song to have any kind of real lyrical you know matching to things not like carnival did it was fine it was there what about um so what? dreams by the cranberries that's a delightful song oh. wait are you gonna let me oh do sorry the songs though oh yeah oh, oh sorry Gosh. you lost me at piano bar <laughs> and musical episode <laughs> <laughs> And, like, you're going to hate me for this. So, like, anyway, I just, like, I want Zena and Gabs to sing my number one piano bar song, Wagon Wheel, at each other. That's fine. 
that's happening because it's a piano bar and you can't not have that. And then like maybe like Jock Circus and like Margaritaville or something. <laughs> oh my god. And then <laughs> my number one thing that I want is Aries to sing Friends in Low Places. The end. Have a nice day. Okay. <laughs> I, I can definitely yeah, see, I that. see that. Oh yeah. yeah. I see it they so much. They should have done that. <laughs> yeah. It, Are you kidding me? It would be that. the best scene on the show. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice day. Uh, okay. Kirby says or asks so we all Uh-oh. know kevin sorbo was super salty about being on season five i've also read on the internet so it must be true <laughs> parentheses that he was super jelly about xena the show's success and was even complaining about the character xena being hercules equal in fighting which brings me to my question was xena hercules equal did lucy lawless make as much money per oh, episode as kevin sorbo in the height of xena or did she just make 72 cents to Hercules' dinar? I don't have these financial facts. I would love to know. I'm sure she did not the make The answer much. is 100% because she did not make as that's much. that's how Hollywood works. So, especially in the 90s. I like to think that once Zena really took off, she was, you know, she was, she was not doing badly. But, yeah. I would love to know. This would be a great question to ask Lucy Lawless. I hope she dish. I think she... Let's ask Rob. I, I think, well, I was going to say, like, <laughs> combined Rob and Lucy household is way richer than Kevin Sorbo, so it's fine. Yeah, take that, Kevin. And also, Sorbo. just, like, I think at the end of the day, she probably accumulated more money than him because he's a stupid nothing, and she's oh, Lucy Lawless. Yeah, I mean, it's just, like, I really, Kevin Sorbo is not nice. <laughs> yeah. And, like. And that's why we're so mean to him. This is like over and above just like even this petty Zena stuff, which is true. And the quotes are out yeah. there. They're yeah. out there. You the can receipts find them. are there. The receipts. Like, the receipts. Mm, it's not cool. Not cool. So it's a bummer that he was like, you know, he was all like flaunting his. Yeah. The question is, did. Um... Renee? Nope. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. No. <laughs> no, the question <laughs> is how, how much. Uh, I hope Michael Hurst didn't get paid more than Lizzie. That's- that's well, I, my... I'm worried that Michael Hurst definitely got paid more than Renee. A lot of people probably oh, did. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, sweet baby angel. We love you. But he also it did sucks. directing and stuff. So, like, that's, that's uh, I mean, so did she. So she got some bank yeah, from the directing. She got some. <sighs> it sucks. But, yeah, I think that, that, was, that was and indeed sometimes is still, still is. 100% still often. Is. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, guys. Yeah. I have to just bring it back to an anger. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. How could whatever the fuck season of the X-Files still, like, like not not even the first one of the reboot, the the new one of the reboot. Season 11. 11. Season 11. Go, yeah, David Duchovny would make more than you, Gillian Anderson. What? I know. Yeah. This is the world in which we That live, is the so. most absurd thing. So things have not changed. No. But even, didn't they get paid, like, the same for the previous season? And they came back? No, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know exactly what went down. Or I don't really, know. I don't know the financial. Anyway, effect. I just was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that this, was insane. You know, but this so is this why is from trans- 2000. Transparency is important. <laughs> like, I hope everybody yeah. knows. Like, tell people how much you make. Make sure that this isn't being done to you. Find out how much money Kevin Sorbo made. And, and make, make sure, sure you get paid more get than him. more. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get more. Oh. <laughs> so next question is from Jeanette. Hey, guys. So I listened to this podcast Lucy was on in, like, 2014. Partially Examined Life. They discuss the idea of how celebrity culture is basically a modern religion. The podcasters mention how, according to some ancient cultures, the most powerful person in the culture would be sacrificed to the gods oh, no. <laughs> for the benefit of the people. Hmm. This can be related to modern Twitter? day internet <laughs> yeah. trolls and the absurd expectations of some fans. Oh. So my question yeah. to you is, hmm. do you agree with this? That we as a society place celebrities on such a high pedestal that we often forget that they are just like us. It also mentioned how strange fans can often be, that we know details, intentional or not, oh, about no. Lucy and Ren's <laughs> personal lives as if they were our closest friends. Well, it's really creepy geez. to think about. I like they, that, my favorite mm. detail of this, not to like, but I like that you called her Ren in this comment. Yeah. It's like, we are buds who 
who can call her by her nickname. It adds <laughs> something. Yeah, they, it adds something. They did coffee talks. We didn't. I like, didn't make the coffee. I didn't, I yeah, just, they they, they sat there and they said those things for in them. us to watch. <laughs> okay, I, you know. Yeah. Well, I think that's. Uh, I think. Uh, a very laudable way of Ooh. handling the intense attention. Well, to be in control of what you of put what out. You put out there. Yeah. So if you want to do something like a coffee talk where you get very real about like your life and feelings, that's a way of, of controlling the situation mm-hmm. that I really admire. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Yeah, and I've like I feel like we've said that before when we brought these up, but like I have never really seen people be that open. Mm-hmm. Like, and I thought it was really cool, but the expectations of like fandom today with people is bananas with the internet and stuff yeah it's part of this question like yeah and i do think that it's very easy to forget that people are human beings <laughs> that you're talking to i think i don't know and I th- but i'd also like part of like celebrity culture. that's two different things like fandom and then celebrity culture but certainly i feel like the um, question is kind yeah. of being asked through the prism of fandom mm. Like, uh, celebrity culture as a whole is, yeah, yeah, a really different beast. Yeah. Fans, I think, are, you know, they're twofold, because they're often, like, the most respectful people, like, to celebrities. But like, not, uh, except for the the really intense ones, where they're not at all respectful, or, like, if the celebrity does something, they're, you're vocal to that person on, on Twitter or whatever in a crazy way. It's sort of like the idea is, like, here... We have the celebrity gods and like the the cast and like the showrunners and stuff who are like maybe on the pedestal, but then like they get sacrificed by the people, quote unquote, which is fandom because we have like such access now that we just like feel like we can do whatever we want and say whatever we want and 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 that and kind of thing. Them. And like, <laughs> it will cancel them. Cancel <laughs> them and like is that you know that kind of thing, where like we're like, I don't know. Yeah, it's a complicated yeah. kind of question. I think in the end, like, I guess I have very limited patience for people who, like, pity celebrities for, like, the intense interest they have to put up with because those guys are all really paid well for what they do. They're very privileged. I feel like in the end, they're fine, you know, and you as a member of the fandom don't have to, like, protect them from, like fan attention i feel like there are people in a fandom always who try to nominate themselves as like the protector of the celebrity and like (laughs) to tell other fans off for like when they're doing something and i'm like i don't know i think they're fine like i don't (laughs) think they need protection i you know i kind of roll my eyes when you see like a celebrity interview where a celebrity is like complaining about like the inconvenience of fame because it's like, yeah, maybe you didn't like want to get this super famous and you were just trying to do your job and happened to do it so well that you're being paid millions of dollars and everybody knows your name. And it's You'd like, be singing a different tune if it was happening to you. Maybe, but at the same time, I'm like, I you find know, it very stressful to be think grateful. about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's and like use a... your platform for good. You know, you have right. this thing now. Yeah. You can't pretend you don't have it. It's, it's, I don't know, it's like that thing of, like, if a celebrity is eating at a restaurant, I wouldn't go over there while they're eating to bother them for your selfie, you know? Don't interrupt their meal, at least. Yeah. You know, maybe I get them on the, uh, go into the car You're, you're not entitled to Yeah, their, but, like, some people, time. like, do, you yeah. know? And that's where they feel, yeah, and then the celebrities can feel, like, they owe it to them because of how they, they make their money because of these fans and stuff like that. So it's like a, it's like a weird, yeah, it's like a double-edged sword. Um, but I do think there's a lot of fans who are just very rude and very demanding and uh, don't respect the people. I had to listen to this podcast. I yeah, it know sounds what, very like, interesting. Yeah. I like how it has this kind of classical dimension. Like that there, people were sacrificing to the gods. Yeah. You know what? Just, that I just was rereading the like how like the details part, like knowing details and stuff. I think that like one of the things about like fandom now and like the culture around stuff now is that like we do know all these things that are well number one is is like you hope that celebrities can be in control of their image so like we were saying with like the interviews and stuff that Lucy and Renee have done that are like really great they do they did that and they know they're being filmed they know what they're saying they know what they're doing versus like people go and 
break into the friends and family of celebrities' private Instagrams and locked, like, Facebook accounts and stuff like that and post pictures everywhere and all that stuff. And that is really weird. So I feel like we can, like, know all this information uh, that is public and you have to just keep it in the fandom where it belongs and not anywhere else. You know what I mean? Or keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can break into their <laughs> private just, Instagrams. Yeah. Like that's I mean that's what that happens. Yeah. That's like yeah, stuff that happens course. with like stuff nowadays. Yeah, like yeah. it's really intense and creepy. like like the question says creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, like, the NSA is spying on everyone. Like, what is privacy? <laughs> are you, oh, you're condoning? Whether you're a celebrity or not. Yeah, I'm, like, hack everyone. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing sacred. <laughs> Jeez. All right. <clears throat> Catherine sends We've got so us. many Katie's and yeah. Catherine's. Katie, Katie, did you these submit are, yeah, these all, are all these the, questions yeah. to the mailbag? It's like all yeah. your aliases. <laughs> Not very imaginative, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so Catherine uh, writes, Love the podcast. I've been a huge fan of Xena since I was a kid, so y'all add a new layer of enjoyment to the show, especially since I'm pretty ignorant of the film study side of the show. I had no idea that the show was paying homage to all those movies. I would unconsciously recognize some of the parodies, but that was it. I have so many questions <gasps> for the mailbag. Oh, there right. are a lot, so let's do this. <laughs> Number one, do y'all read the disclaimers at the end of the end credits? Yes and no. No. You don't read them. <laughs> I don't read them. I've seen them. I've, read, I've seen them, yeah. I, I've read some. I've read them, like, in a list. I've read them on the internet. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really whenever want, somebody points yeah. it out to me, that's when I read They're it. They're fun. They're fun. I see them on Woosh, yeah, mainly, Woosh. I think. Yeah, yeah. We see them, I think originally, like, in the first season, it was brought to our attention that we weren't, like, you know, reading them as part of the yeah. podcast, and we were like, oh, yeah, should we have been doing that all along? And we were like, well, we already have it for so <laughs> long that I guess we're just going to keep not doing it. For me, personally, they're a little bit, like, fights on heads. It's a oh, little bit too, too, silly. too silly for me. It's a little Fair stingy. Enough. But, um... It, it worked for how the show was. They're cute, and sometimes they do add something. Sometimes they're like a punchline at the end of a joke. Mm, no. Here's like, no. Probably that's I, not my favorite I episode. hate jokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, question number two. Why do y'all think Gabs has a bunch of nicknames and Xena none? Is this canonically, like in the show? Or I'm not sure. In, in... You wrote this question, Katie. <laughs> yeah, so what did you I mean, did. Katie? <laughs> Well, is it that because that one time is a long it, like yeah. canonically she has a long name Gabrielle. There's that, just three syllables. You can do stuff with that. You can do many we, options. We you hear her on the Gabby, show being called Gab, which is yeah, Gabby. on the show mostly, mostly from, from Joxer. Joxer. Yeah. Yeah. Who's silly? Like Zena doesn't. That's call like a her normal Gabrielle. That's a normal like, kind of she only calls uh, Gabrielle, really. small name. For I feel like she, she maybe has once called her Gab, and only because her voice failed. Like before her voice the failed. She was saying Gab. Gab. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. She's called her sweetheart. That's nice. Oh, that is nice. Does that count? Sure. Yeah. Um, but um, Zena has none. It's weird to say Xena has none because she's Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, destroyer of nations. Destroyer of nations, conqueror of whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that a nickname? Zinster. I don't know. Zinster. It's a name. You certainly hear people it's refer a, to her as the warrior princess. Yeah. That, does that it's have an a word? Alias. Like some kind of an alias? Is that it? No. Um, it's not an alias. She's yeah. not pretending. To. Yeah. I don't, hmm. I don't know the word for that. But that's true. Those are names. Title? Well, I was just going to say, Subtitle. like, I want to apologize if you are a writer of fan fiction uh, and you have done this. I am sorry. <laughs> and you can do it if you want to. I don't care. It's fine. I don't like that uh, sometimes in fic, Xena, like, they, like, Gabriel will call her Z. Z. What? Like, Z. Oh, my it's a goodness. little too Like, wait, how do you, do you spell that? Just X? Like, X-E. Oh. Like, Z. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is not happening. She should call her enough. Stop trying. No, to... no, no, no. Yeah, no, I don't no. know. That takes no, me no. out of it. I'm like, this is not. This does not feel true to life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's odd. She's yeah, Zena serious, is just a serious yeah, figure she's a serious who cannot person. have an. A she nickname. doesn't have a nickname. Have we ever acknowledged on the podcast that us calling Gabs Gabs is just like an us thing that well, no yeah. one in the fandom does? I feel yeah, like, well, people. Yeah, because surely someone did. 
It, but it seems like in the fandom, she's Gab. Gab, Gab or, or Gabby. But we decided at an early stage that it has to rhyme with abs because they're such an integral part of the character. So she's Gabs. <laughs> I think uh, that I, I surely don't... has been on the internet <laughs> I, I long sh- before. Yeah. I sure hope so. Yeah. Okay, next question. What is your favorite... Oh, sorry. All time. What is your all-time favorite episode? You can answer that, Katie, since yeah, you're right Yeah, <laughs> family fair. God. Sometimes when I get snarmy. Uh, family fair. I think mine is still uh, Paradise Found. Wow. The podcast only made that more clear to me how much I love that episode. God, I don't really have an what answer. What did you say before? Well, I said my hipster answer is to Helicon and Back. Mm. Which we'll soon get to. I know. Um, but probably, like, I don't know. Shouldn't it be something like Ides of March or something? Sure. I mean, Ides of March is amazing. You could do worse for an (laughs) all-time favorite. (laughs) It's hard to pick one episode. Yeah, it's so hard to pick one episode. They're so different. That's the thing. That's what's so fun about Xena is that they're, you know, like, this is my favorite funny one, and this is my favorite serious one. Yeah. Different mood. You're in a different mood. I mean, I'm very bad at favorites because I feel like they change, Yeah, you know, just depending mm-hmm. you can you can watch a thing that you think is your favorite and you watch it and you're like well it's okay but you know yeah. it's nothing special <laughs> <laughs> yeah your favorite scenes and maybe your favorite yeah. scene is in this one but the yeah whole and the whole episode is maybe it's not like, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay it's a tricky one mm-hmm. okay vera the next of Catherine's questions yes are Xena and Gabs your OTP? If not, then who? Ooh, oh, this is another OTP question too, right? I think this, one, we have two different OTP mm, questions mm-hmm, in our mailbag. Mm-hmm. This one, I think, is specific to the show Xena. Oh, so, okay. I think, right? Oh. Well, is this the, is this the actual usage of the one phrase true one true pair being like literally your one true pair like in all of in all media of all media, media of oh. all time i never actually Sorry. understood it that way because i always thought like or, you would have an otp like within the fandom yeah that's, I mean, that's, that's how, how most people roll yes exactly so obviously hmm. for i think for all of us you know and gabs is our otp in this for fandom. this fandom I mean, yeah Jesus, yes yeah yes for yeah. sure one we'll, we'll answer the, the the other yeah. question later because okay. we do have another question like, in the mailbag and to just maybe throw in some foreshadowing it's not like they're not very very high up mm-hmm. on the otp yeah. list if For not sure. number one mm-hmm. okay I don't like lists <laughs> which which actors would you like to see in a xena reboot i think we have answered this in previous mailbags oh what God. did we say what did i say? don't remember I'm not sure. I have. I. I think. I, I, I think. I probably like wimped out and was like some unknown. I think I would have done the same, but yeah. also like I agree because like we kind of had a show with more or less unknowns, and it was this one. It's you know, true. We got to bring in the name, in so you got to cast but. Vera Farmiga as Joxer. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, that's. I think that's enough. Right? <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> We have so that. we're good. Like maybe it's just the jo- like Jaxer <laughs> yeah. show and it's sort of like, Vera Farmiga. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, that that's good. That's a good one. Was it my turn? Uh, though the next oh. question is for Vera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for Vera Farmiga. I can Kate, ask Katie. It to would you, you like to ask Vera? Yeah, yeah I would Vera. <laughs> how has your opinion of the show changed as you viewed it as a kid versus as an adult? Uh, and then addendum, and then also when you did a podcast about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, ch- it changed majorly. Like, I can't express enough how much it changed uh, in the sense that I just got it so much more. Like, I loved the show as a mm. kid, mm-hmm. um, but I just didn't really, like, get the depth of it and, and sort of, like, the history of, of everything and all the stuff that we've learned and uncovered uh, while doing the podcast uh, certainly also helped uh, expand my horizons. And it just made me realize just how, you know, the show just went exponentially better. And it was already pretty high up there as one of my beloved shows Mm. from my childhood. Mm. And it's funny because you used to be much more kind of self-effacing about it. Like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, this dumb show. Because like, it's like, hey, fight like. in the pilot. And now I think you 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 respect it more openly. Well, because like, I'm like, yeah. yo, it's good. You it have to deal is, with that head fight in the yeah, pilot. Deal with it. 
Okay. I feel like that's out of desire not to oh. like continue yes. like make it long, but like I just feel like that's a kind of defense mechanism. Yeah, that I have like when you like want to yes. show something yes. to someone that you really love, you're like, yes. it's fine. It's a little stupid. Yeah, right. Because like you, you never know the person's reaction. Yes, yeah. and and mostly, unfortunately, their reactions always like this is this is dumb and you're like yeah it is right and oh. then you're secretly crying wait who have you done this to i'm With sure other people things, not just this yeah show, other show, farscape other <laughs> what that's gonna come up in a few yes it's yeah. very silly I've too. D- I've done it with the times. Star Wars prequels. Well, <laughs> okay. I mean, that is, um, of all the things just mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> people make fun of them, and I go, "Yeah, yeah, they're the worst." <laughs> oh yeah, 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 moving on. Oh boy, Nick, I, I'm just gonna read it. Gaffrodite, do you ship it? Yes. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. yes. With yeah. bells on. Who, bells on. Is that like, oh, it implies that there's like a no answer to this question. <laughs> yeah. That was like one of the things that um, I certainly didn't remember as a kid. And no. I, I was like, holy shit, this yeah, you is wouldn't. huge. And it's even better in a rewatch, isn't it? You really see the seeds of it sown mm, yeah. so early in the show, much yeah. earlier than you think. Yeah. Especially a binge watch. Yeah. yeah. Which is what we did. Oh, I love them. Okay. Y'all watch any other LGBT films slash shows? If so, which are your faves? There's so many. I mean... Technically. Is this, like, specific? Hmm. I think we could interpret it broadly if you have a show that you think would And then I just make everything... Yeah, because yeah. it's really hard to differentiate. Fand- like, when you're a fandom, fandom person, yeah. then you go like, Bleh. Um, Yeah. I mean, these two like, characters are breathing the same air, is shipping it, you know, mm-hmm. that thing. I think that works as long as the show does well by those characters, <laughs> uh-huh. which is a big it. Yeah, that's, that's a stretch. <laughs> like, I mean, literally right at this moment, currently on the air that we are watching. It doesn't have to be currently on the air. Well, I know. I'm like, I'm thinking out loud because I don't have a list like of all the things that we watch. But like, you know, Why Not an Herb is awesome. Right, that's a big one. Um, You know, Will and Grace reboot. Speaking of reboots, we're (laughs) currently watching. And I I do find it comforting and nice uh, to watch. uh, And it's still funny. Yeah. Um, I feel just uh, like in terms of like a broadly speaking uh, thing, like you know, I I would count American Horror Story as just a generally it's, <laughs> aesthetic. It's, it's very camp, Ryan which I feel fits into of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that I'm you know into right now. And speaking of camp, I would recommend Hannibal. Cue eye roll from my <laughs> co-hosts, but Hannibal is a very gay show. I feel like two boys, which some of us do, kissing with Blood brain in their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> you really know how to sell it, Vera. <laughs> uh, and in terms of films, uh, we we probably have a long list. Certainly, yes. I know one of Vera's favorite movies is Carol. 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 2015. <laughs> 2015. 2015? That's where it came out. 2015. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, and it still has not won an Oscar. Oh my God. Maybe next year, guys. Maybe next year. <laughs> what are some other great gay movies? Oh. Imagine Me and You. Oh, uh, well, yeah, the these classic. are classics. Yeah. We're just talking about classics. Well, I mean, yeah, at this point, it's just like more like, here's a list. But uh, yeah, those, those are some faves. I know, like, from the last, I guess, when were the Olympics? This year? Yeah, this year. So, like, from this year, I've discovered two great uh, movies. I think I mentioned one of them already on the podcast, like, whenever the hell we were podcasting while the Olympics were Mm -hmm. on. (laughs) But it's this movie from 1982 called Personal Best, uh, directed by Robert Town. Um, And it stars uh, Mariel Hemingway. It's a very surprisingly um, uh, very gay movie. About these running, uh, these ladies who run, and they're trying to get into the Olympics, but it's the year where uh, the U.S. boycotted the Olympics, so all they can hope for is their personal best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it was just very, very shockingly, um, just wow, Uh, good. It used to be on HBO. I don't know if it's there now. Probably not, but. You can Excellent look movie, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely worth watching. Yeah, and then I have another one that I watched like last week that was like extremely surprising. Shown to us by a friend of the podcast, Amanda. 
Okay. It's on Netflix, right? But please, just be very careful. It's Concussion from 2013, not the Will Smith concussion about football mm. head injuries. No Will Smith in this. Okay. Robin Weigart is in ah. it. Ah, she's good. She's very good. She's many things gay Deadwood. in things like Deadwood. Recommend. Yeah, that's a um, great LGBT yes, recommendation. Uh, but Concussion is extremely surprising and amazing. She's incredible. It's directed by a woman, Stacey uh, Passon, I want to say. And uh, I think she wrote it too. Super well done. I've been thinking about it for like since I saw it. So good. Go watch it, Netflix. I was just reminded that uh, also for TV, Gypsy. <gasps> oh my God, Gypsy, Gypsy, Netflix. Oh, my God. Yeah. Go watch it. And R.I.P. Yeah. Gypsy. And we yeah. love Gypsy so hard. <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> that wasn't a spoiler. That was literally the show is canceled. And Can't, yeah, no one person. season, but it's great. <laughs> so you will season. enjoy it. Oh, my go God. Watch yeah, it. I mean, there's, there's, oh, yeah, shows. Okay, Lots so shows. I have a couple more okay. lightning round questions. Okay. Uh, Sammy Gamora asks, Xena famously called Gabrielle Mavis in The Furies. If Gabrielle had gotten to stooge it up in motherhood, what ridiculous name would she have called Xena? Blanche. <laughs> Blanche. I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking of Golden Girl's name. <laughs> <laughs> I go with Lorraine. That, I can hear Lorraine. Her yeah. Um, I'm gonna choose Carl. Carl. Okay. Yeah, with the southern accent. Yeah, like like Rick from Walking Dead. Coral. Coral. <laughs> no, because uh, K sounds are funny, and they uh, are. And I think she would call her her uh, by a, a dude name. Good and, answers. Okay, I have one more lightning round question. Andy asks, "What's on the menu at Megan Joxer's Zena Gabs themed tavern? All we got in looking death in the eye was the Bard Burger. What would you want to see on the menu? Saddlebag mystery platter, <laughs> Sai steak, Scythian apple pie. You sound great. I had one, but I don't remember it now. I I would go with Zena Warrior pasta. <gasps> oh, I fucking love that." Chakram quesadilla. <laughs> you just say that because you like quesadillas. Yeah, and uh, a fajita roundup. <laughs> <laughs> I think just all the things from Stevie Nicks fajita roundup would be on the menu. <laughs> oh, Argo artichoke dip. Whoa. <laughs> it's an archo dip. Argo choke. Argo choke, yeah. <laughs> Danielle writes, Katie. Which yes. Gab- yes, that's you. Which mm. Gabrielle hairstyle is your favorite? Long hair season four gabs or late season five, six short hair gabs? <laughs> Long hair season four. Fuck you, short yeah. hair gabs, but not from season five, season six. Oh, mm. I'm definitely with long hair season four. You guys are basic. Long hair season four forever. I don't no. care if I'm basic. <laughs> it's my favorite side braids forever. <laughs> it's so beautiful and long and flowy and blonde and shines in the sun and I love it and it's perfect in Family Affair when it's all must Mm-mm. I like how I floppy it in. is and when it's short <laughs> she like does her fights and it like flops around a cute like not like it like it's undulating just, way it has to me to choose so it did have to choose it shows off her abs more that's not true at all <laughs> that's, that's the abs pop false. <laughs> <laughs> Shallow Seas We Sail asks for your mailbag. Could you discuss the never made episode Last Chance? This would have been absolute gay magic. We were deprived some really great Sappho material. Perhaps bits of this never made episode found its way into many happy returns? Question mark. Ooh, I want to answer this when we talk about many happy returns. Yeah, pin it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a big pin for that one. Uh, yeah. The script is out there, so mm. I, I think before we answer it, we'd like to read that. Yeah, what, you yeah. Have gener- not done. what is it generally? It's more Sappho involved. Ga- in Gav is Sappho. is a doppelganger. One of her doppelgangers uh, is Sappho. Mm-hmm. And I think it might also be a musical. Oh, no. Or maybe that's just something they talked about. This is why... It's the piano bar. We won't be <gasps> discussing it until I don't think later. that Aries would sing Friends no, in Low Places. No, he would not show episode. up for that. <laughs> well, yeah, this was an episode that they were trying to get off the ground, maybe from as early as season four, and it just never quite happened, and they ended up cannibalizing small aspects of it for many happy returns. Mm. I think we'll 
pin it for then. We will definitely answer your question. Yeah. But uh, it sounds yeah. like gay magic, though. Mm-hmm. It, it absolutely does, and it would have been really cool to meet Sappho on the show. Okay, Karen asks a two-part question. Okay. Okay. So, David Lynch's recommendation for watching Twin Peaks The Return is, I recommend getting whatever screen you're looking at as close to your eyes as you can get and use headphones, turn the lights down, and then you have a chance of getting into a new world. Mm -hmm. How would you recommend people watch Xena in order to have the best viewing experience? Oh my goodness. I love... David Lynch, so much. I think that's pretty good advice yeah. for watching anything. Yeah, I mean, that's I, I feel like I always am a person who likes to, when I'm watching something that I love, it's like, ooh, this is, I'm taking this serious, so I'm sitting on the couch, I'm going to turn the lights off, like, yeah. I'm in my own theater space, and I'm staring at the TV, and I'm in the world. So I do recommend that for everything. I don't think that, like, just because you're watching... Um, you know, something that's like a David Lynch movie where it's like you have your headphones on, the sound design is amazing. Like, it it doesn't make it different than if you want to, you know, sit down and watch Xena that way. However, I also did watch Xena with you guys yelling and, like, having a good time. So I think that watching it with people is super fun. Uh, that would well. be my answer as well. Um, Watch it with friends if you can, because that's how we did it. And I think we can say that our experience was pretty ideal. Yeah, it was awesome. But yeah, but I, I, I whenever I'm in a show, I do like to, to, to yeah. see. It's like there's, there's a difference between here's my stuff that I'm watching and I'm eating breakfast and it's like whatever and it's night, daytime versus like it's nighttime, the lights are off. Right. Yeah. Watching this thing that I love. Yeah, I'll do that. That's certainly how I watched it as a kid. Yeah. Because my parents would go to sleep, and then I'd go into my yeah. TV room. And that kind of reminds me how I watched it, which was like in the, with like, the lights basement off? TV room. Watching, what's the, li- watching the lyrics? Watching with no lights on. Yeah. And then they say the same thing, but in French. Oh. What? Yeah, what? it's w- uh, like watching x with no lights on, and then the French part is like, with no uh, lights on, or I like hope the in cigarette, the house or the something. The smoking man's in this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Um, why was it in French? Yeah, why was it in French? I don't know. You can look it up. It's like something, something, maison. Like, it's like, wow. What are I'm we talking sure about? Like, naked no ladies, right? Very naked ladies, right? Yes, thank Somebody's going to correct me. Are they Canadian? Be like, yeah. Is it because they're yeah. like oh, okay. Quebecois? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, yeah, they're Canadian. Yeah. Huh. Cool. So yeah, no but lights. That, but that adds to the atmosphere of like a scary show. So maybe with Xena, like it can like vary by mood of episode as well. It just You could do all Like as my memory goes, like it's just you're – just so with it. Like, yeah. that's the only thing you see is that yeah. TV. Shut out those distractions. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can agree that No nobody... second screen experience. Yeah, no. never David the Lynch idea. would come into your house and Make hit you on the head. Quinoa. But, well, when you put it that way, I kind of want to see that. I want to get hit on the head by David Lynch while trying to <laughs> second screen In, like, a good way, something. like, in a nice yeah. way, not in a mean way. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds pretty mean. No, not in a mean way. Okay, so the second half of Karen's question is... If Xena had a lightsaber, what color would it be? And would it have a light core or a dark core? Bonus question, what about Gabs and Callisto? It would have bisexual lighting. Purple, <laughs> the purple one. Xena's. Well, no, it have to be blue. She's going to have a special one. And, yeah, you'd need like a double Like Samuel blade. L. Jackson. <laughs> okay, well, I, what, what is the meanings of purple and... Green and blue and right. red. Well, obviously the red lightsaber that all the Sith yeah, Lords scary and bad. have Call the red. Okay. I actually think it would be really, really cool if Xena, even as a goodie, had a red, <gasps> had a red, had a red one. one. Because right, that's yeah, her like dark past. Wait, so, but like, as a goodie, like you mean like now, not yeah, when she was Yeah, that she just still uses her bad person lightsaber what to about, do good work. What kind of lightsaber did she have when uh, her she bro probably, was alive? Yeah, I bet she had a blue one. Did and she probably turn? used that for a really long time. They don't turn. you got to build a new one with a new kyber crystal. Oh, God. <laughs> What's green? What's purple? Well, green uh, is Luke's lightsaber after he loses mm-hmm. his dad. So that mm. seems to be like like older, wiser, mm-hmm. like okay. not quite so innocent. Like okay. I can see like season six gags. Gabs would have this. Could have a green. Yeah, she would start with a um, She could start she with a blue. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, purple is if you're Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you can have yes, a purple. Samuel L. Jackson no one only. else can do that. Uh, I Kalisto kind of is hard because you know if you're if I'm kind of tempted to give her a red one too, and then it's like red on red when she yeah. and Zena fight. Would it actually be really cool to give her something like different? What if she had one that you've never seen before, like a like an orange? Yeah, yeah. that's cool uh, for fire. It should, right. it should be the color, yeah. yeah. But also, like, what is orange but, like, a mixture of red and whatever, and then it shows that yeah, well, she's, sure. she's like, less evil than what you're seeing from Xena. From Xena. I, I mean, I really cool. like that, that Xena would actually have, yeah, yeah. the classical bad guy yeah. one, and the bad guys would okay, have now, it. Somebody write this fic now, Star Wars, but with Xena people, or Xena as Star Wars, let's do it. And then light core or dark core, I don't know that part of lightsaber lore all that well. Like, they, like, get their power from, like, the light side or the dark side. School her, Karen. School her. I don't know what you do with the light side and the dark side in Xena because it's at once so, like, it seems like it would be helpful because, Mm -hmm. you know, Xena seems to turn from the dark side to the light. But then it's, like, so much more complicated than that. Like The Last Jedi. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly like that. <laughs> Star Wars says it was always meant to be. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Karen. So now I think we're going to move on from Xena questions Whoa. to uh, we had quite a few questions related to us, ah. to the podcast. Okay. Uh, and kind of just, we had one major question that mm-hmm. was asked many times in many different ways. I'm just going to read one version of it. Or maybe, sure. Vera, why don't you no, go ahead? No, I don't want to you know, Your Vera's like, I'm not, I'm not helping. Not, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> Kira Baltrushat on Facebook asks, My burning question is, what am I going to do when you guys are finished with the podcast? The thought alone gives me anxiety. Are there any projects planned for the After Warrior podcast <laughs> After era? After Warrior podcast, I like that. Well, I first just want to say, please, 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 like, I mean, don't, d- don't have anxiety yeah. about this. Like, we're we're not like being like put in a raft and sent off, <laughs> sent off into the ocean. Once maybe this, we should. This podcast <laughs> is done. We're we're definitely still gonna be around. We're gonna be doing. We have so many minisodes built up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mostly from our very patient patrons. Very, very, very we love patient. you guys. Um, Thank you. We, like there there are still many things I think that we're gonna want to yeah. say about the show. And like some of the topics that we wanted to do like. That we could do after. Yeah, yeah, I think just like some thematic yeah. stuff that we want to hit, you know, in maybe like a more focused way. Yeah. Like, I think they're definitely Xena related things we're going to be doing after A Friend in Need. Uh, don't think of A Friend in Need as like the final episode of Xena Warrior podcast. There's going to be a lot more stuff to cover after that no, point. No, let's just drop our opinions on that and run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, I guess in terms of like, whether we're going to like actually officially like do another podcast after this one, we're still not sure about that. Like we're not sure what we will do. Uh, we're definitely talking about it, and we are helped by our many listeners oh, who have written in suggestions yeah. for other podcast <laughs> topics we could handle. Do you guys want to help me with this? Sure. Jess Kaylee suggests. Spartacus, Buffy, or X Files, three of my all time faves. Uh, Candace uh, suggests Orphan Black, which is interesting. I feel like we don't mention Orphan Black very often. So, I mean, we've seen it, some of it. Some of it. <laughs> That's probably why. T. Campbell suggests Spartacus. Spartacus. And Mary Patterson suggests The Hundred and or Winona Earp. Winona Earp needs better podcast analysis. I really can't listen to any other TV show podcast without oh, wishing it was you guys. What? Oh, Mary, thank you. I mean, all of the, this is like just so flattering to have, you know, you guys writing in like with your kind of like suggestions for things you just want to hear us talk about, <laughs> which is really cool. Even when it shows where we're like, what, that? We don't know that. Um, but yeah, I, I think like the short answer is that we, we just don't know. <laughs> I mean, Xena really was like this, like just perfect, conf- yeah. flush- 
confusion of (laughs) events yeah make up a new word for it that's how perfect it was like we just we all watched it we all loved it we felt like it wasn't a show that had had this kind of analysis Uh uh-huh that was the thing if if you look at a show like buffy for example like you know there there's been so much said and written and expressed about buffy over the 20 years it's been on tv and like i don't uh, i'm sure we could do our bit and like it would be very much like our brand version Mm -hmm. of that sure sure but um like you know i'm not necessarily like feeling like we would break new ground by doing that so i you know i mean this is this is the sort of thing like behind the curtain this is what it sounds like when we talk about what to do next uh we, I, I guess we don't really have any definitive statements to make to you guys other than that we're thinking about it and we definitely appreciate all the interest. Mm-hmm. Like It is extremely lovely that you guys care this much about what's going to happen next. But we want to make sure that you do not feel too anxious. Because and we're definitely doing it with many stories about Spartacus. Yeah. <laughs> so all the Spartacus stuff you're going to get. Absolutely. We, we, will, we will definitely hit some Spartacus for you. And yeah, if, if uh, you want to hear us talk about one of these other shows, if that's something that appeals to you, consider uh, becoming a patron. And uh, <laughs> that's one of the rewards is that you can get a mini suit. Uh, yeah. So thank you guys, and I hope I didn't like give you false. It occurred to me like it, when we talked earlier uh, in a previous <laughs> podcast about the fact that we had gotten this question a lot. Yeah, I was like, oh shit! Like my answer to that made it sound like we were gonna give you an answer <laughs> oh, for what we're gonna no. talk about. So I just want to apologize if like there were any false hopes. We really don't know. Like if you th- if you do the math, we're not going to finish with Xena until probably next summer. So, like, this is still very far from our minds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary also asks, uh, how are you feeling about starting season six? I'm not sure I can watch Friend in Need again. We're excited to watch season six. Yeah, I'm so excited. We're really excited. I've never been more excited. It's been so, like, so long since, yeah, like, we've been on a season that we wanted to be doing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun to do, it was fun to do season five, yeah. but, like, and then as well, he, as you all know, like, who've been listening, we kind of did the first three, like, at a more rapid pace, to, mm-hmm. yeah, because, like, you know, earlier episodes, there wasn't as much to, to say, and then we get more into it, so... It, like the later seasons have sort of been have been you know one episode a week, so it's been it's been longer. Um, so I'm just really 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 excited because all of the episodes are so interesting and fun and good and like there's really hardly a dud in the bunch. Like yeah. I just, I'm just very very excited and I think that it will be in, um, fun for us to start unpinning the pins uh, and a challenge and it's gonna be good. <laughs> and we have to watch the finale. <laughs> yep, we so, sure do. Yeah, it's it's part of if the mandate. Will be doing It'll that. be twenty hours long. Get ready. Oh, it's gonna be. Uh, we should throw predictions. I think we're gonna do like a ten part series. <laughs> <laughs> it addresses every. We laugh, concern. but that, yeah, that, that, that could theory, A distinct possibility. I'm yeah. actually serious. <laughs> I, yeah, it's gonna happen. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> T. Campbell asks another mailbag question. Would you film a podcast for any episode in season six? So a vodcast. That would be super dope. Oh, my God. Uh, baby. Maybe. Probably not the whole thing because you don't need like three hours of us. I mean, I'm not yeah. ready for like close up. The thing is, the thing is, like the way that our uh, podcasting situation is set up, it's not really uh, set up for filming because um, one would be somebody's back would be on the camera. Uh, <laughs> but maybe we could do more kind of like, we could do like some sort of Instagram story situation. That's so. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, kind of some kind of behind the scenesy thing. I think personally, I would feel very self conscious if I knew there was a camera aimed at my face oh my like, yeah. during a podcast. Like, well, it would be life. it would be facing your back. That's why we're on the radio? Yeah, yeah. we don't have <laughs> the live show was stressful enough. Yeah, exactly. For, like, having to think about how you come across visually. Yeah, uh, but it, it's very funny that we we actually had a couple people ask about videos. So I mean, like, wow, why does everyone want to see our faces? Yeah, T Campbell. That's how it is these days. 
that's what everybody yeah, does. Multimedia. Yeah. Well, I, well just... I was going to say that um, T. Campbell, if you're uh, a patron, I, we have the video of our live show from mm-hmm. uh, Z Night Retreat for Them Bones, Them Bones. Mm-hmm. That's true. That is It up. is on our Patreon. You get to look at us. Thanks to Karen, friend of the podcast, who filmed it for us. Excellent camera work. Okay, the next question is from Cadillac Baby. Would you consider doing mini reviews of Renee's side projects or short films? She has a great short film called One Weekend a Month that I think y'all would like. I would do. I think that would be I really fun. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I really respect Renee for all of the movies that she does, and some of which she like writes and directs. Uh-huh. So like, it's really, yeah. I, I would love to like give her some love. That, that's a great idea for a mini-sode. Kathy writes what are some of your other ships that you love or hate and why uh, uh, any guilty pleasure or tps uh, this question is for fandoms other than xena <gasps> oh my god so this yeah is our other question about otps which i think is yeah. beyond just right, right, right. wow it's a oh. big one it's a huge one I mean, what are like your big otps Jesus. guys in your life as a fan uh where's a coin <laughs> oh. Put one in. All right, I mean, I'm ready. What what is it? Just any you know problematic ship that fandom says you shouldn't be shipping. Here I am shipping it. Give us some examples. I don't know anything bad. I ship anything Ray- bad. Yeah, I ship Raylo. <laughs> Ships Raylo, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I was very heavy into Spike and Buffy. They, Buffy. They were my OTP. I love Buffy. Um, any other kind of the worst. <laughs> and obviously loved... you love Kalisto Xena, right? That's a, yeah, another yeah. OTP actually for, for this family. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I think everybody at this table really loves Mulder and Scully. No. Oh, don't get into this can of worms. Yeah, it's it's, a can of worms there. It's a can of worms. That's true. I ship it in theory. I'm not saying I love what the show did. They are transcendent. Yeah. They are beyond lists. They are everything. When I say like... Ship it. It's oh my god, this is just a big topic. You have to get into X Files fandom, you have to get into No Romo, you have to get into like all this stuff. I'm certainly not No Romo with the I just, it is one of this. I'll say this for them it is like the only ship that I have where I find them to be like this transcendent pair of soulmate perfect people that belong together who I have absolutely no interest in seeing yeah. make out and or reading yeah. about yep. in fan fiction in that way. <laughs> it's the yeah, it's the thing from the <laughs> it's it's Lisa Kudrow from the comic being like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. And it's, I don't know what that is. It might have something to do with like me watching it when I was younger and this very specific way that the ship was presented. Um I don't know. That's just a like a me thing that is more complicated. But they're definitely on like the lit I mean on the 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 all times list i feel like there's like the all times list that has like you know been my like stuff growing up which is you know like the han leia but more recent stuff misty cordelia oh my god uh, <laughs> misty cordelia you're just obsessed with it right now that's i can't oh my god oh I'm gonna, that's from american horror story coven slash apocalypse yeah, my you know my biggest old OTPs if I was gonna make a list are probably Han and Leia, Mal and Inara, John uh, from Firefly, John and Aaron from Far Escape. <gasps> yeah. I think we can all get behind yeah, John that and one. Aaron. That's um, a good one. Jamie and Claire from Outlander, for sure. What else? Buffy stuff. I, but, but Spuffy came to me as an older person. I was very big into Angel and Buffy as a youth, <laughs> like that kind of thing. I feel like it's only been like the last bunch of years that I've had like more like fem slash ships and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, Zena Gabs is like my number one. Like they've like absolutely superseded all the other bosos. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just such a it's just such a calibrated perfectly for me show full of drama and like just craziness and I love that in everything I love a lot of over-the-top like operatic scenarios and stuff like if there's time travel great like you know I don't know if one or the other dies for temporarily sure temporarily or not (laughs) 
Um, I have no guilty pleasures. No guilty pleasures. Yeah. They're all They're great. They're all great, like, yeah. Um, I mean, some are more canonical than others, I suppose. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's the thing is that, like... You guys had a hilarious femme slash non-canon ship that I've always loved that you did, which was... Uh, oh, I know what you're going to say. Olivia Dunham from oh, Fringe. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, just actually, yeah. and Elizabeth Mitchell's character on V, whose name I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, you just made me think of Sawyer and Juliet, which is actually also like way high OTP up there. Yeah, I'm you. sorry, they're all very, there's so many heterosexuals on this list, but it's just like, that's what I did. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that you, was a you fun named a bunch one. of yeah, I loved I loved your joke ship though, which wasn't a joke. You it took it very seriously. Joke. It was yeah, very man, serious. we had like a whole famic. We had uh, what else? Fic. All sorts I wrote of stuff. Fic. Yeah. I can't think of her name anymore either. I don't know, but you guys, <laughs> Elizabeth Mitchell on V. Yeah, yeah. but just <laughs> FYI, Olivia Dunham is so good. Oh, Sometimes so good. I'm reminded of my deep uh, foray into French. And that fandom and all that stuff. Did you know Meghan Markle was on Fringe? Yes. Probably. <laughs> Clearly not memorable. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Is there a people ship, remember a people ship Sarah Connor with Olivia Dunham? <gasps> That's that pretty was, cool. That was a big fandom I dig thing. it. That's true. Well, we haven't even mentioned Game of Thrones. Do you have yes. any OTPs out uh, there? Where's yeah. the coin? Uh, Jamie Cersei. I think I've, I've maxed us out on coins okay, today. Okay, fine. Great. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm just going to shake the jar. Yeah, all right. Jamie uh, Cersei, your yeah. big ship from Game of Thrones. There's a lot because there's so many characters there. You can do a lot of like shuffling and reshuffling. Yeah. What are our big? What are our good fem slash ones from right now? So Misty Cordelia, they're canon. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, Korasami, yeah, good times. Super Corp. Of which we're, you know, to, yeah, it's kind complicated. Of complicated. It's complicated. Super Corp. Yeah, Klexa. Oh my god. How how did oh. we not mention that? Oh no, we were talking about so, them earlier. I'm not sure about that. <gasps> no, uh, Alexa. We said Klexa, not oh, you. Oh my god. <laughs> also, she was. I mean, we might as well just say how she was also going off when we were saying Electo. Oh yeah, uh, that's for, right. She definitely thought we were praising her face acting. <laughs> Oh my god, that's funny. Yeah, we were, we were talking about them earlier. I know, yeah. I mean, it's just a given. Like, I feel like Clex is just like a given, right? Like, it's like you don't, yeah. you don't have it, to mention well, it. It has so such huge. Xena Gabs vibes, so too. Huge, so if yeah. you like one, of course you like the yeah. other. Yeah. I, I also love Clex. So. <laughs> Stop it! Get out! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, weird stuff on Winona. Yeah, I ship Winona uh, stuff. I, I shuffle those around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's great about Winona. Is you can do that. It's like Winona with everyone. <laughs> should, it, should I say the thing that will just get me like banished from the earth? Oh, just do it. Well, it's just that my number one ship on Winona is Winona and Doc. So I'm sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll show myself out. I'm showing myself straight out. Well, listen. The door. Good day to you. <laughs> Why, why Nona has her, you know, her romances. You just chose to express that it's opinion. It's my stupid dynamic that I like, that I last week told you. You mean Buffy Spike? The, the scoundrel. It's, it's original Han Leia. That's where um, he from. is a thousand percent better than uh, Han. But she, it's like two Wait, it's do like you two ship Hans. Han and Luke? <laughs> They're like two Hans I together. I do like Han Luke. I think mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a fun one. Yeah. Okay. Because, cause, you know, Doc has a fascinating backstory where, you know. <gasps> Sorry. Oh, yeah. I, I just, love Wyatt Doc. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You started talking about Star Wars again. I just remembered, like, Leia Holdo, my new fave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's God. a great good, good slash yeah, yeah, of yeah. modern era. Yeah. Please read the book Leia, Princess of Alderaan by Claudio Gray. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love to ship Obi-Wan Anakin back in the day. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. Why are you still on the podcast? I know. I somehow haven't been fired yet. <laughs> so yeah, we have a lot of OTPs. Oh, I suppose guilty pleasures. We have a lot of OTPs we should be ashamed of, but I, are, are is that not. A, is that a guilty? Like, I, that's don't the, I don't know. see the differentiation. I don't feel guilty about anything. <laughs> 
That's the thing. I don't either. I love everything. I just think I like things people don't want me to like. I liked <laughs> Gaius Baltar and Caprica Six. Oh yeah, that's a great ship. Is that supposed to be a guilty pleasure? No, oh, it was legit. It's a major relationship on the show. Yeah, at least if, if if being canonical somehow makes you feel less guilty, which I, is a weird distinction to make. So many no, of these that we yeah. mentioned were canon. That's the fascinating. Well, what's canon? Yeah. I think I, <laughs> the I thing that the show's <laughs> pushing on down your throat. I tend to be like I don't know if it's like a lack of imagination, but it is somehow so much easier easier as a shipper to have you know the evidence in front of your eyeballs like, but like to, you know what is the evidence what are you talking to about? just see, see people like making out in front of you then you're like i ship this it's harder <laughs> when, when they don't <laughs> mm, yeah. then you have to think about it <laughs> big to <tid> differ yeah <laughs> okay beck via email asks does carrying out such an in-depth analysis of the show, which inevitably highlights the weak points as well as its considerable strengths, does it make you love it more or less? Do you think by the time you reach the end, you'll be done with Xena? Like, done with it? Like, just be like, oh, I never want to so see this again. Done. Like, it's tattooed on my body, but oh, I shit. never it want is. to see it again. Oh, uh, no. I hope that's not true because it's there on my arm. Um, I don't know. I, like, for me personally, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. Like, I have sort of been going to school for this kind of crap um, for a long time. We and see all, I mean, even though I, we're not doing it on a podcast, we talk about all shows this yeah. way, which I think this is like a part of our process of like loving things. And But also I, like part of my thing that I sort of developed is sort of trying to remember the first time you watch something, which I kind of, I think do differently than perhaps you guys do, which is I actually try to turn that stuff off <laughs> the first time I see something and enjoy it. And then I like don't have um, as intelligent a conversation about something the first time I see it. Cause I just like really have a defense mechanism of just like, you know, gestalting something and just enjoying it and, it's or cool not. That you can do that. Um, yeah. But it's not like, it's like, that just makes it sound like I like, I'm not thinking about anything. I am. I'm just you're like, just it's in, not you're like enjoying crazy. it in the moment. Um, yeah. But I, I think that one of the dangers is that when you start thinking about everything that the show is doing for something like Xena that has like introduces so many ideas, it's really fascinating and fun to dig into. And for me, I would love to just write like, 17 different papers that all have different theses that that can't really be expressed when we're just like sitting here like talking uh so and I think that that will be frustrating uh perhaps as we go along because I think the more that I think about stuff the more I want to be like oh I wish that this and this was clear but then at the same time I don't because then it doesn't then having it be this like kind of mess of stuff is actually more interesting so like that actually makes it less like me hating it and more just like oh look at all the things I can think about and do and all the angles you can look at stuff with so I don't I don't think overanalyzing it is gonna make me not like it anymore or be done with it I think we've you know like having like sat here talking about like every single episode of Xena and obviously some of them we don't like but, like, they're always amazing conversations. Mm -hmm, I never yeah. feel like I come out of talking to you guys feeling like, oh, like, why are, we, why are we talking about this dumb show? You know, it's always like, wow, I understand it so much better now. And, like, in a way, you want to be able to do this with every show you love, which is to, like, slow it down to this extent and, like, examine each individual piece, each episode, and, like, put it all together and, like, watching the way a show like evolves in slow motion, which is kind of what we're doing. I, I think it's so cool and like rewarding. Yeah. I certainly don't feel like we're ruining Xena for ourselves by doing this. I feel like we're very much like expanding our, our love of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I hope the same is true for you guys listening along that we're like adding something and we're not like demystifying like right. the magic of the show. Cause I think, you know, knowing how something's made and like, you know, laughing at like 
it's my spine. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, it's just adding a little bit of shine to a beautiful moment. But, like, you know, it's, it, it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't think of it as like criticism that's taking something away. It's no, all, it's yeah. all adding something. Yeah. <laughs> With all with love, it's all with love in our hearts, except for Ulysses, which the pretty Ulysses fucking die and Hercules, China episodes, which like don't exist. But besides that, it's love. But yeah. even that, like I enjoy, like I enjoyed watching those episodes again because I noticed kind of like some stuff that I definitely glazed over. Well, oh yeah, originally. that's the whole thing with like watching things multiple times and like really yeah. digging in as you really notice. Well, stuff. for the podcast specifically, yeah, for like, sure. Like I know we hate on them, but technically speaking, it benefited me doing a podcast about those China episodes. Yeah, because <laughs> I would really we, hated them. We tried beforehand. not to even pay attention to them the yeah, first time. Exactly. This time we were they, forced to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and as for the the final part of your question, do you think by the time you reach the end of the podcast, you'll be done with Xena? I mean, I don't think we'll ever be done with Xena. I'm going to be done with taking notes on Xena. Yeah, yeah. No more notes. yeah there are certain aspects of, of this process of recording the podcast I don't think yeah. we'll miss. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, the show has just become such a part of our lives yeah. from doing this podcast. I don't think... Uh, it will ever disappear. It is funny to try to imagine like a hypothetical future in which like we don't have to watch an episode of Xena every week. Like, do you watch an episode of Xena? Like, do you sit down and go like, time for some what against an army? Uh, oh yeah, I will do my usual, which is just <laughs> here's my t- ten scenes for over yeah, and over again. Scenes are which, good yeah. until you yeah. decide to do a rewatch. Yeah, and it's exactly. true that we, we've had conversations now, like in season five, you know, about like season two episodes that made me go like, oh, yeah, like, I don't really remember that one. <laughs> well, well, it's been a long need time. need to go back. It's been yeah. two years. Yes. Yeah. In November. Yeah. It's, oh, my God. Been, we've been doing this a while. Yeah. And yeah, you're, I'm already getting nostalgic for, you know, take me back to the store. Yeah. Well, that's season six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Season six will fulfill yeah. some of those feels. We need to quickly feels. rewatch the whole show yeah. before we get to before season six we do so we season can six. recapture That's maybe what we can do with our hiatus is just watch of... all of Zeta. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so fresh when we started. Now it's yeah, like man. we haven't actually watched I, it like straight I just remember we had so many pins in season one for season six. Six. I hope somebody. And I'm like, ah. down. yeah. I I would love if someone has been keeping track of all our pins <laughs> and then could email us every single oh pin God. we've ever pinned. Oh boy! <laughs> Please don't do that, <laughs> pin person. <laughs> Pinhead. So that that is the final question of the season five mailbag. Okay. Thank See you. you guys. Thank you. Yeah. The season six mailbag. Yeah. Uh. Wow. That's that one is really gonna be like a six parter for sure. Yeah. Uh it's been great. I hope uh we have answered your questions satisfactorily. Yeah. Uh, as always, thank you everybody for listening and thank you to the people who leave us uh incredible reviews on itunes we read them they touch our hearts and also the people who send us emails that are just incredible uh who share things with us um we are just overwhelmed uh with emotion uh, reading them and just thank you for sharing your your lives with us uh in that way We'd also like to thank uh, all the people who interact with us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Tumblr, like all over social media. Like it means so much to us that you guys are so (laughs) are so engaged with the podcast and 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 share your thoughts with us because we love to hear them. Yeah. And all our patrons, of course. Yes, thank you, patrons. Alana, yes, thanks Alana's. you. We thank you. We miss her this week. But we had Jewel. <laughs> we had Jewel. Ju- yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Alana. She hates Jewel. <laughs> um, anything else to add? Or should we GTFO? I think this may be it. Okay, Say goodbye so. to season five. Bye, season five. Peace. We are moving on. All right. Follow us in the seven things. Go. ZenaWarriorPodcast.com. Links to all the stuff is there. Please go to Apple Podcasts where you can subscribe and rate and leave reviews. We are on Twitter at ZenaWarriorPod, on Tumblr and Facebook and Instagram at ZenaWarriorPodcast. The power. The passion. The the podcast. podcast.